Hey, welcome to Vortex Garage. Today we're going to give you a little bit of an update of where we are with our Spitfire. Now, if you haven't already done so, check us out on Instagram because I'm actually really good about posting updates throughout the weekend as I'm working on things and sharing pictures and whatnot. So you might find that interesting to check out. You can find us on Instagram at Vortex Garage and uh, you'll see some pictures and things that might be a little slower to get on YouTube. Um, but I wanted to share an update with you where we are. So as you can kind of tell here, we've got our floor pretty much in. Um, all of the welds back here are done. We've got pretty much all of the stitch welding done. It was a little bit of a pain. I'm still cleaning up the welds and whatnot, um, mainly because we had a little bit of rust that went up the transmission tunnel. So we couldn't really cut a perfect seam weld there. We had to actually fabricate some material to fill in the gaps. Um, we've still got Clecos in the front, but we've got the welds actually in there. We just need to finish the, the spot welds on the front flange. But as you can tell, I've already moved on a little bit because um, I've been grinding welds most of the morning and I need a break from that. <laughs> so I want to move on and start building this out a little bit. What I've found is I can actually start building out our inner sill and our outer inner rocker panel, outer rocker panel, and still have plenty of access to come in here, grind welds, clean things up. Um, with the rotisserie, I can get to the backside very easily. So not a problem there. One of the things I was looking at though is in order to get the inner sill piece done, I'm going to need to clean up kind of back in here where I got all the spot welds kind of pulled off of. And then the inner rocker actually goes right here as well. You know, it would probably make sense to use this camera that I'm holding in my hand to give you a little closer view because, well, sort of show you how the puzzle fits together, but also some problems that I've run into as I've started to look at that. Not a big problem, just typical stuff you'll find on these old British cars. All right, so I've gone ahead and turned on this little camera here. Hopefully I got enough battery in it to show you what I'm talking about. So what I've done, as you can see, is I've gone ahead and cut away some of our rear quarter panel on the lower end here. Not a big deal because it was actually rust damaged and this is going to need to be replaced. Now, I don't know to what extent I'm going to replace it. So I've just cut a couple access holes, started small and then grew bigger when I saw that I needed to. The main thing I was looking to do was I had a little bit of damage here from the panel popper and I want to go ahead and stitch this up and clean it up. And I needed to do some hammer and dolly work. So to get the hammer and dolly on this piece, I needed access. Well, as I was kind of trimming it away, I noticed this right here. Our inner piece here that I'm not planning to replace has some rust damage on the lower end here. Pretty common, right? This is, you know, really exposed piece back here. You got your wheel right here. It's going to kick up dirt, uh, water, everything. It's going to, this is going to be a prime spot for rust. So as you can see, I've cut away the outer piece. What I need to do is I need to go ahead and repair this before I move forward. So typical to what we've been doing on everything else, I got to take a little bit of my existing sheet, my nice new sheet metal, cut out a replacement part and go ahead and seam weld it in. So looking at this, it does have this hole um, that's, that's pressed in it. And I don't really want to have to mess with remaking this. And I don't think I have to, because this looks like really good solid metal next to it. So I'm probably going to go ahead and just trim out here and then I'm going to kind of angle up and over. Now it's hard to see on camera, but maybe if I go like that, you can kind of see there's a bit of an angle right here, but it's a fairly simple angle. So this should be a pretty straight piece with maybe a bit of a diagonal bend in it, which I can do with my break. So I'm going to have to mark this, cut that out and go ahead and replace that piece before I move forward. Once I do that, let me grab some stuff and I'll show you. Once I do that, we'll have our inner sill piece right here, which will, whoops, pretty much go all the way in here, just like that. I can show you on this camera. That's why I'm holding it. So you can see it'll kind of go in like that. Obviously I'll have to line it up and whatnot. And it'll weld to our floor piece and it'll line up pretty nice in here. And I'll just sort of set that aside for right now. And then let me grab one more piece. Okay, this is our inner rocker. So this will go on top of that piece. And, and one of the reasons that I wanted to cut this away was so that I could kind of see what I need to do to clean up there. So let's go ahead and show you on this. This one sort of slides in like here and it'll actually weld to the flange and sandwich into that flange there. But as you can see here, this is one reason I wanted to cut away so I could see. Look how this puzzle fits together, just like that. See it? It'll go like that. And then 
you'll have the welds. I'm not really handling the camera too well today. You'll have uh, welds that'll go through there and basically attach it to that inner piece that we need to repair. And then this will be the inner rocker. Hang on a second, let me move this out of the way. All right, so that inner rocker up here will end up also attaching and sandwiching in with this piece um, with our inner sill that attaches right there. So obviously I've got a fair amount of work to get that prepped and put in, um, but really I've kind of looked at it before I continue, I need to really go ahead and clean this piece up, make sure that I get that taken care of. All right, so again, as I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this so that I can cut out some stuff. Kind of get an approximate line. I know I'm gonna block the camera, but there's not much I can do about that. And sort of come down like that. That's approximately what I'm thinking of doing here because we've got our bend so if I were to track that bend, that bend is, is funny because it's not a really straight bend and, and it feels like it's got hammer marks on it. And that's not where I used the uh, panel popper. I used the panel popper here, but over here where there was no panel popper action going on, this whole area is just sort of, and it's funny because there's a panel back here. So, so this feels like this was almost hammer and dolly at the factory to fit. Um, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's even waves and whatnot in here. And this is completely internal to the car. Like I said, there's a panel back here. It would be the outer panel. Even on the inside, you can't access this little piece right here. Um, so kind of interesting to see that. So again, when we talk about the overall quality of the, of the build. I feel like, honestly, right here, that's where the bend starts and starts kind of on this way. But if I look here, the bend doesn't really start till like, like right there of all things. So it's kind of a wacky piece, to be honest with you. It's almost, and it's almost curving down right here and then curving back up right here. So it's almost kind of like, like that a little bit. So no big deal. What we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and cut out a, a piece nice and square. We'll kind of get it test fit up before we cut this out and then we'll put whatever bends we need to. And if we need to hammer and dolly it like they did in the factory, we'll do that and it shouldn't be a problem. So one thing that I like to use, let me grab them. I have these little note cards sitting around. I forget what I used them for, but they uh, actually end up working really well for some of these small little repair panels because um, I can sort of use them and you can even bend them right on the piece that you want and sort of get an idea. You can fold them to get an idea of where you want to go and then you can kind of measure stuff and then use this to build a template. So let me grab my marker again. Right, so like I said, you can kind of come in here. I'm going to get this top piece lined up with where I want to go. And then I, I want to start my bend right here. I'm going to remark this. This isn't going to show up as good on the camera, but it works for me. And then I want to put a piece right here. And I pretty much want to intersect those two lines, which won't be a problem. This one will go like that, and that one will go at that angle. And then I've got my bottom piece right here, and I've got that. I said, I'm just approximating it, but you'd be surprised. It looks like junk and, and like, what's this? But honestly, I'll go take it to the table, and I'll uh, draw these lines out with a ruler. And I'll get nice and close. I sort of rough drew them out on the table. So let's go ahead and cut this out. That's pretty darn close. So that's gonna get us pretty close to what we need. I might trim this a little more cause I can, I feel like I can give myself a little bit of room here. And uh, this is gonna be a good template. We'll cut this out of our sheet metal. All right, so after a little bit of cutting, welding, and grinding, we've gone ahead and repaired the rust damage that we had here. Let's take a quick look with this camera. As you can see, it looks really, really good. We've still got this little cut piece up here that we've got to go ahead and stitch up with some weld. That won't take any time at all. We'll go ahead and knock that out. But this piece now has been repaired, and we are ready to be 
uh, adding panels back in here. So we're going to take a, a look more, see what else we got to do here. And we're getting one step closer to building the rest of this stuff out here. Uh, I don't know how much more we're going to knock out in this video. So this might be it for the update today, which does kind of suck, I know. Um, but we're going to try to press ahead and get more. I will tell you, this is slow work. A lot of times waiting for welds to cool off. Uh, taking time, doing a lot of grinding, getting things as perfect as they can be. Even though you'll never see this part, I still was kind of wanting to make sure that it looked pretty good. So, um, of course, all this is going to be coated with some really, really good rust preventative so that this will never rust out again. Um, but in the meantime, we are one step closer to getting this puzzle back together. All right, so before we wrap up for today, I went ahead and flipped the uh, car over on the rotisserie. Let's go ahead and show you a little bit and update you on what you last saw with the big floor pan that we were working on. So I think you last saw it, we had done the spot welds, uh, at least some tack welds along the back and the front here. Well, we've gone ahead and finished up our spot welds on the back flange here, and we've still got our, our tacks over here. We still got to do that, but that's super simple. That'll literally take like no time at all, literally super quick. The big difficult part that's actually taken a lot more time than expected was the stitch weld along the seam here. And you can kind of see from far away that there's a, a little bit of a, some filler pieces in there that we're going to have to talk about. So before I show you the close-up views with this camera to kind of talk you through it, what we found is, again, I go back to saying I really wish they just made this entire piece because it's one single stamping from the factory. But instead you got to buy these pans separately. So because of that, if you've got any rust damage on your transmission tunnel, you're going to have to A, repair that, but B, that's going to interfere possibly with your stitch weld. So quick, quick recap, stitch weld is when you have two panels and you put them right close to each other and you stitch them together with a weld. There's no overlap. The alternative, which is a little bit more forgiving when it comes to doing body panel work, is what's called a lap joint or a lap weld. And that's where you put a flange on one side, about a half inch flange, and that flange sits over top of the other panel. And you end up with, if you've got any variation, you've got that half inch that you can sort of work with. So if you've got a quarter inch variation here and there, not a big deal. The problem with a, with a stitch weld is you really have to be dead on. You have to have a super, super tight joint for those welds to actually penetrate and hold correctly. So the problem that we had is that we actually had some rust that went high enough on the transmission tunnel from the old floor pan that we didn't have good quality metal where the aftermarket piece ended on our transmission tunnel. So we actually had to cut some of that away and that left us with some pretty substantial gaps. Some of those gaps being right at this kind of, you know, the breakover point where the transmission tunnel starts. So that left us with some problems. So what we had to do was fabricate a couple small pieces and get them in. And uh, what you're gonna see when we zoom in here are those pieces and also some kind of funky looking welds if you haven't really seen stitch welds before. So another recap, what you got to do with these panels is you can't just come in with a MIG gun. You know, maybe you can modify it a little more with a TIG, but with a MIG, it would be too much heat to come in here and run a continuous bead. You'd end up warping the heck out of these panels. It's just too thin or you'd burn through one of the two. So what you got to do is you got to do a tack weld tack weld, tack weld, move around, keep them spaced apart. And then you got to let the panel cool off and then you got to come in and do more. And it's a very, very time consuming process where you end up with tack welds that are essentially next to each other. And they kind of look a little, little spotty. It's not that nice, cool, continuous bead. You've got these tack welds that are sort of bounced around and in there. And that's what we have here. And interestingly enough, and I'll, I'll start to share with this camera, this is a huge stitch weld, if you think about it. It goes from here all the way down, all the way to here is one single stitch weld on these floor pans. So that's like two and a half feet, almost three feet of stitch weld that has to be done. So it's pretty substantial. Now, here's the pieces that we had to go ahead and, and repair. So we, we made this in our uh, bending brake with a piece of sheet metal to give our break over angle and then our shrinker stretcher to build the curves out. And then we cut into our aftermarket piece and up here just to give us a nice uh, amount of material to weld to and also have a nice clean breakover angle on the top. So it actually looks really nice from in the car. Now we are going to grind all of these welds down. These are completely fresh, not ground down. Um, but we'll go ahead and grind those down. It'll be nice and smooth. We've done it here, so I'll show you here. So these are ground down. We've got a little bit more cleanup to do here and then we'll cover them. But this is stitched here. You can't even tell where it was stitched. 
And this is looking really, really good. Um, you can see that I did coat it with a little bit of the uh, weld through primer, and that's why you have these kind of burn marks. That weld through primer is kind of nasty stuff. Um, I prefer to really just use it where you have sandwiched pieces because I like to have some sort of a coating in between them. Um, you don't really need it for the stitch weld because you can come through and do some really good sealers over them. Um, I had done it because I ended up, I left this for about a week and I didn't want any flash rust, so I just hit it real quick with the weld through primer. And I should have come here and kind of ground it off where I was cleaning up some of the stitch. When you do weld that, it's very zinc heavy and you end up, you know, you run the risk of zinc fumes and stuff like that. So you end up having that concern to deal with. So I kind of don't really like using the stuff unless I'm doing it with, uh, with these overlapping panels. Anyway, went ahead and stitched. So we've also got a little repair panel here. This is a little small piece where, again, we had just too much of a gap. We could not make that jump with the MIG gun. In fact, it was about a half inch gap at one point. So we cut a little bit of extra away to give ourselves a nice little repair panel we could put in. A lot of hammer and dolly work to get everything to line up, and uh, we're pretty much there. And uh, once we had everything tacked in, it was a matter of just going in and completing the stitch all the way around. Um, so that's kind of where we are. Let me go ahead and, and flip it just for fun. Obviously, the rotisserie has really made this job a lot easier because I can move the car around, do the hammer and dolly work, and I can pretty much do it all by myself, which is great. And let's see if you can see with, with this camera. Just a tiny bit. All right, so kind of looking in over top, we've done a little bit more cleanup on, on our welds here. We've still got more to do, um, but you can see we've got our breakover piece here and it looks nice and clean. We, we did do some extra welds on the top here just to kind of give a little extra material uh, to make sure that when we ground down, we'd be nice and smooth. It ended up meaning, to be honest with you, in retrospect, a heck of a lot more weld grinding and that's why I sort of stopped and moved on because uh, I was getting a little bored. And you can see I, I even knew I wasn't gonna finish this today, so I went ahead and coated it with a little bit of primer. Um, the point is with this is this is going to get covered in carpet anyway, but I still want this to look as, as clean as possible. I, I think it's going to look pretty decent. It's not going to be perfect, but you know, if you look from the factory, this thing was never perfect in the get go. There's so much in terms of, you know, weird angles and, and, you know, marks from the, from the stamping and whatnot. So I'm pretty confident that when I grind all the welds down and finish everything, it's going to look pretty much OEM in there. It's not going to be 100% perfect, and we could probably sit there and, and hammer and dolly it and get it as perfect as we can, but there's a point where I'm going to say, hey, if I'm OEM quality, I think I'm pretty good because I'm going to put carpet in this. So I want it to be strong. That's number one. It has to be structurally sound, and it needs to be something that is done correctly so it won't rust in the future, and I'd like it to have at least OEM quality in terms of its look, and I think that we're pretty much there. So I've got a lot more weld grinding to do on there and then some final dressing and cleanup, but that's pretty much in and done. So our floor is essentially in, and that's why we've already started to move on a little bit and start to build some of these other pieces up. The nice thing is I can take a break from some of that grinding, work on this stuff, and thanks to the rotisserie, this is completely accessible for me to come in and work on. So that's pretty much where we are. Um, I don't think there's too much more to update you. I think the biggest thing, like I said at the, uh, the start of the video, is if you want to see the most recent updates, I try as I'm working on stuff to pop on Instagram, especially while I'm letting welds cool, and uh, pop a picture to uh, maybe write a little commentary on what we're doing and uh, kind of keep you updated. So if you want to see the latest and greatest, meet us over there at Vortex Garage. Otherwise, as I go along, I'll keep updating you on uh, YouTube. So you can tell we got a long road ahead of us when it comes to the metal work on here, um, but I'm pretty happy. Um, I know I should wrap the video up, but I still I like talking, you know that. Um, the point being is that when I have this side done, I'm pretty confident this side's gonna be a little bit easier, not to mention I've had the experience of doing this one. Um, but once this whole floor piece is done, really all that's gonna be left are these dealing with the quarter panels, and there's a little bit on our rear valence that's gonna need some repair work. And then the main body structure is gonna be pretty much taken care of. Of course, we're gonna to have to work on the bonnet after that, and that's a whole nother story. But um, yeah, I'd say we got a lot of time left of metal work, but uh, we're pressing ahead and making progress. And as soon as this out's of the way, as, 
let me say that again. As soon as this is out of the way, then we're going to get on some of the really, really cool stuff, some of the mechanical stuff that, that I like to do a little bit more than this. But progress is great. Wanted to keep you updated. Stay tuned, subscribe, and we'll keep you updated as we move forward.